Hi everyone, Jamie here from the Utah Education Network. Welcome to this episode of UEN Nearpod News. I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that since it's the end of the school year, if you are looking to take some courses to get some relicensure credit, that UEN has two Nearpod courses available, the Nearpod Beginner and the Nearpod Advanced. And both of these courses are available um, to work at your own pace and at the completion, you will be not only prepared to become Nearpod certified, but also have one USBE credit, which equals 15 relicensure points. So if you're looking for a lane change, make sure you go to uen.org and click on our professional development tab to get started taking your courses now. In addition to that, today I want to introduce you to the immersive reader and also show you the VR field trip lesson pack. Let's talk first about the immersive reader. In order to use the immersive reader, you need to turn it on in the lesson settings. So click on your profile picture in the top right corner, click on lesson settings, and then it's the second option down. It's as easy as just flipping the switch to turn it on. From there, the rest of the control is up to the student. So in this lesson, I'm in a student pace near pod and I'm on the title page. And this title page was made with a third party application, um, maybe Canva or PowerPoint, maybe even Google, but uploaded into Nearpod. When this comes into Nearpod from a third party, it becomes an image. So there's nothing on this page that the immersive reader can actually read. But if I show you on this second title slide, this is a title slide that's made within Nearpod using the add slide option. And in the right hand corner, you'll see a book with an audio icon over top of it. And that's the immersive reader. So at this point, it's up to your students to select their options to get their immersive reader set up. They can just jump right in and click play, but they do have some uh, settings option down here and then some options up here in the right hand corner. Under vo voice settings, they can change the speed of the voice and also select male or female. In the top right hand corner, they have their reading preferences and they can change the language. So let's say that they would like to have the, the reader read to them in French. They can choose to have it changed to read by word or to change the whole document while it's reading. Another option are the grammar options. And I'm going to switch this back to English. So when it starts to read, it's going to read for us in English. So the grammar options, you can choose to have the syllables marked on the page while the immersive reader is reading. You can have your nouns highlighted or your verbs highlighted in a different color. And you can actually show the labels above each of them. So this little N here with the color purple lets the student know that these are the nouns and the verbs are in red with a V on top. You can also change the text preference to increase the text size, to increase the spacing, which is already turned on, to change the font, or to change the entire theme. So these are options that students have when they choose the immersive reader. When they have it set up how they would like, they click play. Multiple choice tests. Learning strategies for taking multiple choice tests. And when they're done and they want to go back to the Nearpod slide, they can click here on this back arrow. So that's what a title slide would look like if you created a slide in Nearpod. Now, the immersive reader works with other options in Nearpod. It will read anything on a draw it. So this is a draw it slide. And here at the top, we have our instructions. So it will, I'm sorry, it will only read the instructions, not the image down below. So I can click on the immersive reader and it will read the instructions. And then again, I can click back. I can also choose to have open-ended questions read. Again, just reading the question at the top. But on a poll or a multiple choice question, 
it will actually read the entire slide. So when I click here on my immersive reader and I click play. Did eliminating incorrect answers help you find the answer to the question? A, yes, I eliminated three answers. So in multiple choice and poll questions, it will read the question and the options. Last but not least, we have our matching pairs. So this matching pairs game was set up using images for each of the cards. So it won't read each of these images, but it will read the instructions. However, if you set up your matching pairs using text, then it will read the text within the matching pairs as long as students click on the card and then they expand it. Without expanding it, you won't be able to have it read to you. But if you click expand, then here's my immersive reader. So in the last lesson, I showed you what slides looked like that were created in Nearpod. But the immersive reader actually works really, really well if you're using the Google Slides add-on. So this is a lesson that was created in Google Slides and the immersive reader will actually read the majority of this text, just not the image. And that's a huge feature if you like using the immersive reader is to create your slides in Google Slides instead. So all of this text on the page, the immersive reader will read that also. Um, this, there's an image at the top, so it's not going to do anything for the image, but the text down here, no matter the size, it is going to read that. The difference is the immersive reader is not in the right-hand corner where you might expect it. It's actually really small over here in the left-hand corner, but it works the same. So I click there on the immersive reader. I have all of my same options here. I click play. Premium Plus, statewide contract for five years. And then when I want to go back to my slide, I just click on the arrow button. So using the Google Slides add-on is a great way to have the immersive reader read content slides for you. In this crazy year of COVID, your students may have missed out on a few field trips. And although Nearpod can't replace the bus trips and the sack lunches, they do have a collection of VR field trips that your students can visit pretty much anywhere in the world. So let's take a look. A collection of VR field trips can be found by clicking on the Nearpod library. And then there's actually an icon right down here that says Nearpod VR. When you click on this option, you'll be taken to a bunch of different VR activities that are actually lessons that are already created for you. So there's college tours, explorations, field trips, and VR Ignite. When you click on one of these options, I can preview the bundle first. And then I can select a lesson. When I preview this lesson, I will see that there are not only VR options, but there are questions that go along with the super cool field trip. Once students jump in and start exploring, they'll be immersed in their location and be able to scroll around as if they were there. So if I decide I want to use this lesson, I can click add to my lessons and then I can go see it from within my own lesson library. And now I can share it with my students as a student paced or a live participation lesson. So that's it for this episode of UEN Nearpod News. Thanks for joining.